Gina, let's start here. Does it still feel to you like you're being overlooked? 100%. What do you think it was that people missed on Gino? <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'm glad they did. I'm glad. <laughs> I never expected it to go like this, not in, in my wildest dreams. Quarterbacks are, are unique people, and I think you need to build your offense around your quarterback. There's maybe a certain bias due to the fact that we're on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's always been a thing with Seattle. And then um, just also, I think, you know, the preconceived notions that people have may, may have about me uh, just because of how my career, you know, turned out and how it went. Um, that they kind of don't want to accept it, you know, that, you know, I am who I am, you know, whatever mm -hmm. that is. And so uh, I just got to keep battling and keep working. I don't really focus on those things, but I do realize that there is some of that out there. It feels like people hang on to the Jets a little yeah. bit, right? Like, is that fair? Which, which, to be honest, is unfair because I was rookie of the year runner up. Yeah. Uh, won eight games as a rookie, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably the most still for a rookie in, in a while. Yeah. And uh, I think it's just, again, preconceived notions. I think there's a lot of things that happened when I was in New York mm -hmm. um, on both teams right. that kind of shaped some of those preconceived notions. And a lot of it was unfair to me, and I knew it back then, um, which is why mm -hmm. it was important for me to get another shot and, you know, to make, make do with it. But a lot of times, you know, guys go through those things and there's some positive that comes out of it, right? Like, so when you look at back at how your career started and that's not how you wanted, you fell out of the first round into the second round, I'm sure you wanted to be a first round pick. Yep. And then you get the chance to start early on with the Jets and that winds up not working out either. I'm sure it sucked, you know, like going through all of that yeah. early on. How did that yeah. kind of help make you into who you are now? Well, I'll say perspective. When you, when you think about it, right, I, I failed fell to the 39th pick yeah. in the NFL draft, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. how much of a blessing is that in right. itself, right? You know, went to New York and obviously I had to battle. You know, I had to mm -hmm. battle and I had to fight and my struggle is no different than any other rookie quarterback who's coming to this league. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's been, you know, really great quarterbacks who struggled as rookies. And so, like I said, when you're in that media spotlight in New York, the Big Apple, yeah. uh, it, it's always gonna be um, magnified 10 mm -hmm. times over, you yeah. know? And so I think that was the thing. And so. For me, just understanding who I was as a man, first and foremost, first and foremost, and then who I am as a as a player, believing in my talent, my ability, um, mm -hmm. believing in the work that I put in, and just the type of player that I am, I'll never let those things get to me. And so for me, I just you know when I had my opportunity, I knew exactly what I was going to do. I had already planned it out, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I was just working, you know, just working and, and kind of in the shadows and just waiting for that chance. Did you have a low point? Did you have a point where it was like? I like, and I don't know, like, I mean, you're a pretty confident guy and we've talked about this right, over right. the years, but did you have a point where you bottomed out? I wouldn't say bottomed out. You know, the point, I, I, I can remember I was about 28 years old mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I was training with Antonio Brown. He and I trained uh, together in the off season for mm -hmm. a long time. You know, my guy Thaddeus Lewis, who's now quarterback coach yep. in uh, at Tampa, mm -hmm. he was at home as well. You know, he had just yep. left UCLA and so I had, you know, I was paying him to train me. And I just remember telling myself, like, I got so many other talents. You know, I'm 28 years old. I got my whole life ahead of me. You know, I could go off and do something else and be just as successful. I, I remember going to the field and I told that, I'm like, that, bro, I'm, I'm cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm good with where I'm at as mm -hmm. a person. You know, football never made me, so it can't mm -hmm. break me. Um, so it wasn't a low point, it was a transition point for me. Yeah. And I just remember that and AB saying like, man, you're way too good to do it right now. Like, that's, mm -hmm. that's crazy. Now, we're, we're not gonna let you do it. You know, and so I like to thank those guys for, for keeping me in the game because I really was about to, you know, just transition my life and go do something else. How'd you get through it? Like, how'd you get through? I know I'm good enough to start, but I'm not getting the opportunity right now because I'm sure there's that thought in the back of your head, right? Like, am I ever going to get my chance? Like, so how'd you, how are you able to process that where it's not affecting how you're coming to work every day, right? Or the uh, amount of work that you're putting in because yeah. you're, it's like you're investing all this stuff, but you're not getting the return right, right away. Right. And that's gotta be frustrating. I found this place, I found Seattle. Yeah. Coach Carroll, um, this organization, just the way that they went about things, the fun that I had just entering into this building, like it was like refreshing, mm -hmm. like a fresh start. You know, a lot of that, like I said, I thank Coach Carroll for because, you know, not many coaches um, believe in all of his players like that. And yeah. he looks at all of his players the same way, the same exact way. And so when I came here and we're doing shoot offs and we're having fun and, you know, we're just hanging out and it just felt like I was just like, oh, I'm on a team again, you know, and, um, you know, being with Russell and uh, Coach Canales and just all the things that he spoke, he spoke so much life into me. Um, those were the things that kind of helped me say, hey, man, you know, 
maybe I will get a shot again. You know, they, they start getting me to believe again, like, okay, man, you, it, it'll happen. And so um, when I got around these guys and it was just so positive, 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 mm -hmm. uh, you know, I didn't know that it would happen here, but I was like, hey, you're right. You know, yeah. I am I am good enough and I do have a shot and I can, you know, if I do work hard enough that someone will notice. And it just happened that it, you know, happened here, but um, I never expected it to go like this. You know, not in, in my wildest dreams. Um, my rookie year, I was watching film of Russell Wilson, you know, yeah. going to the Super Bowl. And I'm like, man, that guy is, you know what I mean? Like, he's yeah. a man, you know, those type of things. And now to be his successor, you know, just how all the things happen, you know, it's really come full circle. I'm assuming when you kept signing back, that's a big part of it, right? Is mm -hmm. that you saw yourself growing. So mm -hmm. where were you getting better then? Like, where were you getting better when no one could see it? Uh, I was getting more confident. Yeah. You know, I was I was starting to believe in myself again, my own mm -hmm. talent. You know, like you said, when I was in New York, uh, you just deal with so much that kind of beats you down. You know, makes you think like, man, these, these guys, you know, maybe they don't believe in my talent. Maybe mm -hmm. um, they're not recognizing my hard work. And, you know, it just began to, you know, like I, like I said, they spoke so much life into me and they gave me so much positive feedback that um, it just made me want to do it again. You know, it made yeah. me want to go out there and, and, and not only win for myself, but like for, for all these guys around me because they were such great people. Probably the most important position on the team, but yep. the mentality is really the same throughout, you know, all 90 guys. Now you're gonna yeah. spend more time with Gino. Mm -hmm. We didn't go on vacation or anything together. I mean, it's <laughs> not like, you know, our families are hanging out in the off season, but again, so much respect for him and then seeing how he works and just, and, and you're just chilling away at that relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna happen in the first conversation or whatever, but it's just this constant back and forth of, where we're at, how he's seeing it, how mm -hmm. he feels, how he sees you know what we're doing as a program, mm -hmm. uh, where the team is. New questions every day throughout practice, um, the decisions that he's making and why, and just trying to have a good feel for how he sees the game. And, mm -hmm. and I think uh, I think that relationship's blossoming. We're not there yet, you know, it's still six months in or whatever. So, uh, but we're looking forward to seeing where it where it evolves over the next few years. Over your two like stints in Baltimore, you saw like very different ways of winning from the quarterback position, right? Like with Joe first, and then with Lamar later. What did that teach you and inform you about how to deploy a quarterback, how to teach a quarterback? And, you know, and ultimately how to try to get the most out of a quarterback. Yeah, sure. There's different ways to win a football game, yeah. you know, and then quarterbacks are, are unique people. And I think you need to build your offense around your quarterback. And um, that's the starting point. And then to see where it goes. So the decisions that you're making um, should be revolved around, you know, how he sees the game and what he does well. And I think uh, I think Rub does a great job of that. But those are the conversations that that we're having as we start to build our system. What do you think people missed on him? Like, what do you think Like, when you go back and you look at it, like where like you have this guy who's had a lot of success the last couple of years since Russell left here. What do you think it was that people missed on Gino? <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'm glad they did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, you know, you don't, I didn't have a great, uh, I mean, we, we played against Gino when he was in New York. That Not a lot of exposures with mm -hmm. him. And I think that actually helps coming into the building and with a fresh set of eyes, obviously a lot of respect for him mm -hmm. uh, from what he's done the last few years. But, you know, you get to know him and I think, I think the players appreciate that you're give him a fresh start and give him an opportunity to lead the team. Have you tried to empower him as a leader like, and try to make it his team? Man, uh, it's a daily uh, process that mm -hmm. you're working through it. I mean, I just, we were talking off camera about, you know, some things that happened during practice and I'm used to kind of, kind of setting the stage, you know, situationally on where we're at and giving feedback. And he came right in there and, you know, and just nailed it with the offense and hit him right between the eyes and where there were and what we needed to do. And I was like, dang, okay, yeah, like, yeah, that's Gino should be doing that, and so the more opportunities he has to do that, and uh, you know, kind of exert, him, you know, assert himself as as the leader, you know, it's uh, it's been fun to see, and uh, it'll keep growing. How do you think Gino can be better now, like this year, than he has been before? Because obviously he's had a lot of experience, he's seen a lot of things. Sure. Um, where do you think the one percent is for him this year? Yeah, it, it's tough to see to think about his how his interactions were with the guys yeah when we weren't you know with him on a daily basis mm -hmm. like he's been with the, you know, the previous staff but I think it's just that I think it's um, yeah. you know pushing him to, to, to assert himself the guys on his expectations mm -hmm. what he wants his offense and his football team to look like and we can be aligned that way and that can be kind of hard for a guy too like when he's been through what he's been through where you know he had a team give up on him and he had to be a backup for a while like kind of having to trying to assert yourself as a leader after you've been through that, like, it probably is a little bit of a process for him to get himself there too, right? Yeah, it's there, and, and he's respectful of us as coaches and, yeah. and, and how, you know, we want to lead the team. So, again, it's just, it's, uh, it's myself, it's Brian Grubb, it's Leslie Frazier, constant communication about, you know, 
what's important to us, how we want our team to be, and he's right there leading the charge. When you're a young player and you're a high, still, like you said, like relatively high draft pick, you know, you know you're going to get multiple shots, right? Like, you know, there's a, like, they drafted me high enough that I'm going to, you know, if I have a rough stretch, maybe they're going to see it through. They're going to give me more than one chance at this, right? Mm -hmm. When you're in the position that you were, like, you know, maybe if I get a shot, like, I might get that much, right? Like, right. I cannot mess this up, you right, know what right, I mean? Right. And if I get one more shot, I might not get another one. Yeah. Um, I'd assume that's a little bit of a, a double-edged sword, right? On one on one hand, it keeps you urgent and keeps you like focused and where you need to be. Yes, it's also a lot of pressure. So, did you think about that when you did get your when you when you when Russell was traded and it's like okay, Gino, you're gonna come back and we're gonna bring Drew Lock in, but you're gonna have a shot. Did you think like I gotta approach this like this is the last shot I have to start? No, um, you know, I, I, you know, I wish I could say that I did, but I yeah. honestly like. I can remember I was at home with my son um, and I got the text at night from Coach Carroll and all it was was saying that, you know, we're going to need you this year. And I knew what that meant. <laughs> yeah. You know, I knew what this is pre-Russell getting traded. I knew what yeah. that meant. And, uh, you know, I had already known Coach Carroll believed in me, you know, and, and uh, John Snyder as well. But, you know, when, it, when I got that text, I, I told my boy, I was like, it's over. <laughs> I, swear, I put it on everything. I told my boy it's over. And I knew it from that point that I was going to play well because I had been training and I had felt myself get better progressively and um, I had become so much more confident, you mm -hmm. know, and really going up against, this, you know, Bobby and KJ and, you know, just the battles that we had every single day in practice. You know, I was the two quarterback and I'm going up against the one defense and, mm -hmm. and I'm turning on the field and I'm filming. I'm like, man, I'm, you know, I'm doing really good out here. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between that and the game, you know? It really wasn't any different. So I had already known. And then once I got my shot, man, like it was super confident. You know, it was it was no doubt in my mind that, you know, this is what was how it was, was supposed to happen. And so I was just ready for the moment and uh, just ready to take it all in. You and I talked a lot about like how you felt that way, like you felt like you were a starting quarterback even when you weren't. Right. Mm -hmm. um, was there a turning point for you with that? Like, was there a point where you went from like I'm trying to get my career back together to like I'm a starter? Mm -hmm. Like like and I, I you know, like you like you've said that to me before where you're you thought you should be starting before you did. Um, was there a turning point somewhere in there when you were backing up where you were like, like, I, I got it? Yeah, um, I would say like around my third or fourth year, you know, even when I got back into the game when I was with the Jets and we played the Ravens, I ended up tearing my ACL that mm -hmm. game. But I, you know, I had been playing pretty well up until that point. And I just felt like the game had slowed down so much. I felt like um, I wasn't pressing as much or trying to make the big play. Mm -hmm. Instead, I was just letting plays, you know, come to me. and. You know, and then the chance that I got with the New York Giants and, uh, you know, I went out there and played and although it was one game, I just felt so comfortable out there. And I knew like, hey, if I clean up this or that, shoot, man, if I can be more consistent in this mm -hmm. area or that area, I mean, who knows what can happen? And so I, I had I had started believing back then. And again, like I said, you know, I just didn't know if the shot would come. But mm -hmm. then when I got here and I was able to be around Coach Carroll and this organization, uh, like I said, they just talked me up and it was so positive that you know I, I truly believe that it was it was time so in a way like what a b and thad said do you almost affirmed what you already knew is yes. what you're saying right yeah. how would you assess geno smith the last two years I, I would say um you know i feel like i've obviously played uh, some of my best football mm -hmm. you know up to date but still not the best that i can be this year i've made a huge jump in so many areas mm -hmm. uh, if you look to talk about the last two years i mean you know the, year, the first year, I was maybe one, one or two points away from breaking the completion percentage record. That's something that's hard to do, right? Yeah. Um, speaks for itself. Last year, um, battled some injuries, you know, missed a few games, but mm. finished the season strong. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we we're a game away from the playoffs, back-to-back -back playoffs, you know? So that's really what matters. And how I assess myself is based on my consistency and my hard work every single day. And I've been showing up every single day. I haven't missed mm -hmm. a day. I'm here 6 a.m. every morning getting my workouts in. Um, you know, I'm, I'm focused, I'm locked in. That's how I assess myself. What I do out there on the field, that's uh, that's the result of, of all of us. You know, it's not just me. It's what we all do, the coordinators, the head coach, um, organization, getting the right players, you know, the receivers and, and mm -hmm. tight ends and running backs that we have, the line, and all of us collectively, you know, as a group, um, you know, that's what we do on Sundays. But personally, I just, I show up every day and I gotta be the same guy every day. And that's, for how, that's how I assess it. Like two Januarys ago, you said to me, um... I remember you were you, you you made that decision to stay here after right. you guys got eliminated from the playoffs, 
And I think you stayed through the Super Bowl because, like, the goal was to make the season last that long. Did mm-hmm. you do that again this year? Yes. Okay, so I'm assuming part of that is, like, in a way, an appreciation of what you didn't have before, right? Like, an appreciation right. of, like, like I got to, like, like, this is my shot, right? Yeah. Um, how much does what you've been through drive you that way? Like, where it's, like, I know how precious this opp- the opportunity right. to be a starting quarterback in the league is. Yeah. So I'm going to do absolutely everything I possibly can. Yeah, and I've already had that mindset. You know, I think um, you shouldn't have those outside, um, you know, factors that motivate you. I yeah. think the true great ones are internally motivated. So mm-hmm. I've always been that way. I've always wanted to work hard. I've always had the right mindset and the right work ethic. But um, there is now added fuel on top of that. So yeah. it's like, double time and it's like I can't even get outside of just wanting to be the hardest worker in the building and just wanting to be the most prepared quarterback Mm -hmm. in the league and just wanting to be the best leader I can be Um, that's all I truly focus on that's all I think about all day long you know and even when I try to turn it off in the offseason like I feel guilty you know (laughs) what I mean like I feel guilty because you know if I miss a day then that's a day wasted in my opinion so it's like Every single day to me until I'm done with this thing is like is that critical. Another thing you said to me before was like how Pete, like the the atmosphere here was so unique, and that was why you kept signing back on the one year deals, right? Mm-hmm. So now you've turned it over, and now you got Mike McDonald in here. You have Ryan Grubb to run the offense. Um, how much of a reset has it been for you, and how different has it been over the last six months? Since I've been here, you know, it's not much of a reset because um, a lot of the people here are still, you know, especially in the front office and like just, it's not a bunch of turnover, but, you know, obviously head coach, offense coordinator, you know, defense coordinator and other guys in the building, those things are new, but everything else just feels familiar. You know, with Coach McDonald coming in, with Coach Grubb, you know, I feel like uh, they've done such a tremendous job with Mm -hmm. setting the tone and wanting to do things their way. and. Um, making it known that, you know, this is um, the new Seahawks, you know, and we pay homage to the past, but it's about winning right now, and it's about what we do going forward. And so with uh, with Coach McDonald, man, we got to win for him. That's mm-hmm. all I keep thinking about is, like, <laughs> we got to win for him. Like, none of that other stuff matters. Once we get out there and it's time to go mm-hmm. play these games, we got to win games, and uh, we got to come out flying around, and people have got to feel us. You know, they really got to feel us. We got that much talent on this roster. Mm-hmm. Um, we got the right coordinators. We got the right people in the front office. Everyone in this building is pulling in the right direction. So it's up to us really to go out there and get it done and execute. You like said, like a lot of your relationship with Pete was based on his belief in you, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and his belief in everybody, but mm-hmm. his belief in you in particular. Um, how has that gone with Mike? Like, how has that process gone with Mike? Just as far as he said, he called almost right away after getting the job, right? Yeah. Like you were his first call. Mm-hmm. Um, how has that process been with Mike? The process has been great. Uh, Mike and I have been, you know, in, in constant communication. I love the way that he's a straight shooter, man. He's straightforward and uh, when he says something, he means it. And that's, you know, you can you can really just, um, you know, love that about a coach. And I think that's what we all admire about him is mm-hmm. that, you know, in this business, man, it's hard to look guys in the eye and, and really tell them how you feel. And, yep. and he's not afraid to do that. And so when he does things like that and when he sets the tone that way, um, it, it lets guys know like, hey, you got to be on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's not going to, you know, baby you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, either you're going to do it or you're not. And uh, if you don't do it, someone else will. You know, yeah. that's the reality. And so our relationship has started off great. Mm-hmm. Um, I love just the type of man that he is. Uh, you know, we're close in age, you know, yeah. which is which is kind of <laughs> funny to think about. But um, he's just such a stern guy. And he's, he's, you know, really about his business. And every single day you can see that, you know, obviously he's learning how to be a head mm-hmm. coach. You know, it's a first time thing for him but he's been around the game and he knows the game he's super smart brilliant guy uh cool guy to be around and um like i said we got to win for him to make it all you know what it's supposed to be and with grub you get a chance to like watch what Penix and yeah and adunze and mcmillan and yeah. polk and all those guys did last year those guys are fantastic you know i got a chance to um, throw with those guys before the season last year and mm-hmm. um i remember just talking to them. I, I was impressed by them then you know i, I thought they had four nfl receivers maybe five mm-hmm. and it was clear that they do <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean and, and, and mike was i mean he, he's got such a strong arm and he's so accurate and Mm-hmm. Uh, he's so smart and so just being around those guys and um how humble they were and 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 then watching them and what they did last season uh i was impressed by it and then to be able to meet coach grubb um learn his system learn the way that they did things and and see why it worked yeah. um you can tell that you know he knows his stuff as well and he he's like 
super brilliant OC. He gives us all the answers we need. And mm -hmm. um, our relationship, again, is still growing, you know, yeah. but like just so far, like I feel like we're off to such a great start. Is there something about the offense that really excites you that you can like, whether it's watching the Washington tape or what you're seeing out here in the practice field, is there something in particular about the offense that really excites you where he's like, I can't wait to see what, what that looks like in September. Yeah, I mean, I just just all the weapons that we have and, you know, just seeing how we can get the ball in all these guys' hands and getting Ken Walker in space and seeing what he can do, getting Zach Charbonnet in space, seeing what he can do, man. Kenny McIntosh has been, you know, coming along. He's going to help us out. Watching Noah fan, run routes mm -hmm. and just how, you know, multiple we could be using him. Yeah. And we already know about the big three with DK Jackson and Tyler and I mean, we've even got four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, guys who um, you may not know about, Derek Young and Jake Bobo and Dee Eskridge and Esau Winston, and just all these guys who are just out there on the practice field making plays. And when they get their shot, I know they're going to be great. And just the entire collective group that we have, man, I can't wait to see this entire offense just come together and just, you know, go out there and, you know, put on a show. All right, two last things. One, how have you tried to make this your team now? Um, you know, it's taking you a while, but you're entrenched as a starting quarterback here. There's new coaching staff coming in. They obviously are going to lean on the player leaders. You're one of those guys. Um, you just ran through a lot of names, mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you didn't want to miss anybody's part of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, how have you tried to make this your team? I think the key is to be yourself. Mm -hmm. The key is to be the same guy every day, to be consistent, um, and to show your teammates that you're, you're the hardest worker in there. You know, guys respect hard work. Um, mm -hmm. You know, no one wants like a celebrity quarterback. You know, yeah. they want you to be the general, you know what I mean, the field general. They want to know that you're tough. They want to know that when in the heat of battle, you know what I mean? Like you're mm -hmm. not, your eyes aren't going to waver, you know? And so just looking guys in the eyes, um, being straight up with them, again, being consistent with my hard work, with my leadership and with my preparation. You know, when, when guys come in, they ask you a question and you got the answer for them, lets you know that, that, that lets them know like, hey, my quarterback been yeah. studying, you know? So just being there for my guys, allowing them to lead as well. You yeah. know, I, it ain't always about the quarterback being vocal and stuff like that. You know, having Olu, um, who, who's stepping into his own into his second year, or starting center, having him step up and lead the group. You know, having mm -hmm. AB, Anthony Bradford, step, Anthony Bradford step up and lead the group. And that allows everyone to have a voice. You mm -hmm. know, I really believe in that. And so um, just being like, you know, just being the maestro, you know, in, in terms of just how I'm doing things. Your story is pretty unique, right? Like where a guy comes in, high draft pick, starts, doesn't work out sits for a bunch of years then comes back in fact look i remember talking to pete about it and we were trying to come up with names and he came up with like rich gannon was a name right like but there aren't a lot right. um has going through what you've been through made you think about like how many other geno smiths there might be out there on on teams depth charts you know and yeah. like have you talked to guys about guys who may be going through that about about your story and and, mm -hmm. and what it took to get back to where you are man i think um the big ex example are guys on our own team. Mm -hmm. You know, I think guys see me and, and it gives them hope, gives them motivation. They see how hard I work, even, you know, the fact that I've gotten, you know, I'm here now and I got a shot, mm -hmm. right? It's never guaranteed, nothing's guaranteed in this business, but how hard I work and they see that I'm working harder and harder and seeing my story, it allows them to say, well, shoot, man, I still got a shot. And mm -hmm. if I just come in and I do my job and I work hard, and, I'll take this thing serious. Um, someone will recognize it, you know? And so if I'm the poster child for that, then man, I'm, I'm super blessed and I'm happy that I could be that. Yeah, this league is filled with, with great guys and great players and great talents. And mm. only a certain amount of guys get to play on Sundays. And there's so many other guys that fans don't know about that are super, super talented that mm -hmm. may or may not get a shot. And to me, that's very unfortunate. You know, I think back when they had NFL Europe and some of those other things, I think it was a good mm -hmm. thing for players to actually get out there and be seen. Um, but now those things have been taken away. So guys kind of just be on, you know, sit on depth charts. And mm -hmm. until that time comes, you never know what they can do. But I mean, if, if I can be an example for the guys that, you know, feel like they deserve a shot, then yeah, I'm doing the right thing. Like Drew Locke, Sam Drew Locke, Howell. Now, Sam yeah. Howell. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've talked to all those guys about like, shoot, man, I remember when I was your age and I was, super frustrated just like man i know i can do this thing and but you know i went about it the right way and i yeah. wasn't like um you know going to the media and you know talking behind the guys back i wasn't um you know throwing any of my teammates under the bus any of my coaches under the bus i truly was patient i truly knew that if god has a plan for me and what's for me will always be for me and if it's not um at least i know i put all the work in that i can 
uh, to get that shot. Well, actually, we actually we, we started this. We're talking about how you're overlooked a little. Do you know? Do you have a feeling on where you rank in the NFL now? I know where I rank personally, but <laughs> I'm not gonna say it out loud. You know what I mean? Like I know where I rank, and uh, I'll just let you know the game speak for me. That's all I can say. Awesome. Thanks, you know. Yes, sir. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right. Thanks, guys. That was great. Bye. That was good. That was awesome. man. Thank you. Thanks.